Hey YouTube, it's me, Logan Albright. Today I want to talk to you about some really cool short story collections that I've stumbled across that I think you'll really enjoy too. So let's take a look, shall we? All right, today I want to talk about the uh, stories of Lord Dunsany. His real name was Edward Plunkett, and you can see why he chose to publish under the name Lord Dunsany instead. He was the 18th Baron Dunsany, uh, which I don't know where that is, but, you know, it's England somewhere. He lived from the mid-19th century to the early 20th century, and most of this stuff was published around the turn of the century. And I have two of his books here. I have a book called Wonder Tales and The Sword of Waleran. Uh, these are both published by Dover Thrift uh, Editions, Dover Publications Thrift Editions. Very inexpensive, good quality, I recommend it. Big fan of Dover, they put out a lot of cool stuff. Now, what are these stories like? Now, this is early fantasy. You know, most people think of fantasy as really starting with uh, Lord of the Rings and uh, the Robert, R. Robert E. Howard, uh, Conan the Barbarian series. This is a little bit earlier fantasy. It sort of bridges the gap between fairy tales, Arabian Nights, uh, and the medieval sagas. You get a little bit of that sort of flavor in here. And they're very uh, whimsical, very uh, charming little stories, very often quite short, just a couple pages sometimes. And what I think he does well is he will drop the reader into his little universe that he's created with very little exposition, very little explanation. You're just expected to know what's going on. There's one story, for example, where you're dropped in and um, it's, it's a thief. There's a thief committing a burglary of some castle or something. You don't know anything about the thief. You don't know anything about the person being robbed from. You don't know anything about the object being robbed. You just immediately dropped into this drama of this uh, burglary happening. And the subsequent things that happen make sense because you understand the scenario you're in. You don't need a lot of exposition explaining the world, even though it's a very bizarre world, a very dreamlike world that he's created um, in all these stories. They're all very dreamlike. But he, he, the way he describes them is just with very uh, with a great economy of words, and you really kind of just instinctively understand where these things are, where these things are taking place. There's a lot of that little like uh, the little shop that wasn't there sort of trope, where you discover this bizarre little magic shop somewhere on the in a back alley of the city, and you buy something fantastical there, and then you go back later, and the shop isn't there anymore, you can't find it. There's a lot of that sort of thing going on in these stories. So in some way, they're a little bit cliched now, I guess, but they're still very charmingly written. And very imaginative. Um, there's two of these here. They're both great. Uh, I prefer personally the Wonder Tales book. It's a little longer. It's got a little bit more variety of stories in it. This one's a little bit more poetic, landscape focused, um, a little bit more allegorical. This one is a uh, more straightforward stories and it's got one of my all-time favorite stories in it which I've talked about before on this channel but I'll revisit now. It's a little story called Chubu and Shemish, and it's about these two little wooden gods that are on display in a primitive hut, some tribe somewhere, and it's a very comical little story. It um, kind of displays the pettiness and the arrogance of these little gods that have uh, ego vastly out of proportion with their powers, and I think that's a great story. It just stuck with me for some reason, and it's really funny. Some of the stories are funny. Some of them are, are just whimsical and charming. Some of them are quite, quite disturbing. Um, he was an influence on H.P. Lovecraft. He's mentioned in Lovecraft's great work uh, on the supernatural horror and literature, which is a great catalog that describes pretty much every supernatural writing before Lovecraft's time. So he was influential on him. I'm sure, I don't know whether Tolkien read him or not. I can't help believe, but believe that he must have because it just seems these kind of fantasy stories were very influential on the later genre. Uh, and I just love them. You know, they have a character all of their own. They're just charming and beautiful, and they take they transport you to another world. Like I said, very dreamlike. I think they're great stories, and I, I'm surprised he doesn't have a bigger reputation. I never really hear him mentioned uh, anywhere else, and I know he's written other books. There's a dedication in this one that says, you know, um, dedicated to the supporter of my last three books, and he lists like three books. I think they're novel-length books, which I've never encountered. I've never come across. I'll have to look for them and see if I can find them, but he apparently wrote much more than what I have here in these two little volumes published by Dover, but I don't think they're easily available, which is a shame because he's a very imaginative writer. I, I really think of all these short story writers, there's this whole group 
of these writers around this time period who were um, influential on Lovecraft and his circle. You know, you've got Algernon Blackwood, and you've got uh, what was his name, uh, Arthur Macon, the Welsh writer, and you've got uh, William Hope Hodgson and Robert E. Howard and all these guys. Of all this circle, I think that Lord Dunsany is the most unique and has his own character style of writing more than any of them. And you really know one of his stories when you encounter it. I think they're delightful. I recommend you pick it up. These are cheap. These are like six bucks for, or even less for one of these books. So Wonder Tales, The Sword of Valerian, any of the Dunsany stuff, really great reads. If you're a lover of early fantasy or if you're a lover of just clever short stories in general, I think you can't go wrong. So that's my review for this week. I've been Logan Albright. I hope to see you next time, and I hope you will subscribe to my channel. Click that subscribe button right there, and we'll be good to go. I'll see you later. Have a good night.